coming back home, setting up this new business. And of course you have friends, you have people that you used to work with. Uh, what were the voices? At some point, I think there was the expectation that I would move back to the corporate employment. Mm -hmm. And there I shared a few friends. Um, my, stop, my phone actually stopped ringing as, as much. <laughs> Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. It all depends from where you're watching us from. It is always such a warm feeling in my heart to just come into your screens and just to be able to speak to you, the woman, and to even for myself. Sometimes I get ministered to as we are in the show, <laughs> so uh, that is such always something that I always look forward to and I pray and I trust that the Lord is doing something in our lives through this show. And therefore, picking up from where we left last time, we had such an amazing, incredible guest in our show. I hope you still remember her. Uh, her name is Njoki Mwangi. Karibu tena sana. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, so, Helen. So, how have you been since the last time? I have been well. How about you? Great, great. I've, I've just been dreaming and looking forward to this episode, <laughs> whereby now you tell us more about Joki and how uh, Kijani has come and grown and you know, the major changes in your life and where you are at at this point in your life and in your professional life. So, uh, picking up from our last conversation, I think the last question I asked was, how are you able to stay grounded? How are you able to, to, to move and to touch lives with such grace and such humility? And the response was so powerful. I've, 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 I think that was the most powerful thing you have said, that it is knowing that you are a steward in all this, that you are a steward and it's about making impact because life is all about that really because if you were actually to write about your own obituary that was scary thing right there <laughs> most of us would have really nothing to write about you know because that's why Miles Monroe said that in the graves that is where you'll find a lot of wealth in terms of visions and dreams that were not realized, a lot of books that were not written, a lot of things that were never accomplished because people have lived and died with those talents and those dreams and those visions and all those giftings that God has uh, put in us because we were too scared to step into it and function in it. And therefore, uh, I just want us now to come back from Iran, and uh, there you are almost settling in. You are doing your business for tea, and people are drinking tea or even exporting uh, in, in, in quite good quantities. And boom, change again, coming back home. And you have all these apparatus, medical staff. Uh, you're actually not coming back to do what you were doing before. That was corporate in the media house. You're actually coming to do another new thing. And here we are. Tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Helen. Uh, yeah. Thank you for this opportunity again to talk about my life and uh, my business as well. Uh, so coming back and settling back in Kenya was um, both familiar and unfamiliar because of course it's home, mm -hmm. but I'd also never done business here. Mm -hmm. But also what I've learned in the last 10 years is that uh, disruption is constant, <laughs> especially. <laughs> yes, in both our workplaces, in business, it's uh, it's 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 all about disruption. And every time you 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 settle, then you find there's 
something new, there's a technology that you need to even em employ to make your work better, mm -hmm. to be able to give your clients satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's what I've learned, and I think that's what happened uh, back in uh, 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I settled, and uh, because I had that uh, focus of, 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 of uh, uh, starting the business, then I just embarked on the same. I did some more research, mm -hmm. and then I formed the company, and uh, we had our first product in that year. Wow. Yes. Do you mind sharing with us what was that product? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the first product, uh, because I would actually come back with a few samples mm -hmm. of, uh, of latex gloves mm -hmm. uh, from Iran, which had tried in different uh, health facilities. So I decided to start with that. And uh, like I was telling you, I'd go to a health institution and they would say, we don't need glove now, maybe we need syringe. Do you have syringe? Mm. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's how I found within the first like 18 months, I had to add like 10 more products uh -huh. into the portfolio because uh -huh. now people would say, okay, we need gloves, but we also need something else. And uh, that has also helped us within uh, the, the, the 10 years of us growing because we built the company around protective wear. Mm. And uh, that was actually also useful during COVID because mm. now we were able to... <laughs> I know, we're coming to that, we're coming to that. Because there is a lot of juice there. <laughs> yes, we were able to serve with the, with the protective wears and uh, we became... Uh, uh, a hub of some sort for protective wear and yeah. also different types of gloves. We actually, the market taught us mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, there is more than one product for, for that use. So mm -hmm. that was just latex and now we've gotten to a myriad of other versions of gloves mm -hmm. for use in the food industry, yes. for, 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 yeah, for theatres, mm -hmm. uh, even household. Yeah. So we have like 10 varieties of that one product. Wow. Yeah, so that's how, that's how that grew. So you can actually say where you started is not where you are. So the business has kept on growing depending on the demands uh, yes. in the market. Yes. And, and therefore sometimes a lot of us mm -hmm. fear to step into something that we really are not conversant with because you are thinking, Ah, maybe I have not gotten the harm of it. So, what will happen when I'm, there is a shock that comes into which I'm not prepared? How, how will I handle that? And already you conclude that I will not make it in this business for the simple fact that I didn't study or I didn't go to school for it. I, I have not specialized in it. But for your case, you decided to venture into something new, something that was not in your professional life, mm -hmm. but you adapted, you kept on changing your business, kept adapting according to the needs and the demands of the market. And that is so amazing because I, anybody who saw you start then and looking at you now will be amazed at the growth that you have, you know, where you are at now. Question, coming back home, setting up this new business, and of course you have friends, you have people that you used to work with, uh, what were the voices that were speaking in your life at that point? I'm sure you know that you are a friend, that close person that you are going to do. This is what I am thinking of doing, and somebody told Joking, but why don't you just go back to the... You are too good there. You are functioning very well and you can easily go back. Why do something that is so out of place with what you are doing? What were the voices speaking to you at that point? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you have new friends coming? Did you have old friends shredded? Did, what, what happened? Uh, what happened is... Uh, most of what you are saying, I think all those things happened. Mm -hmm. uh, at, at, at some point, I think there was the expectation that I would move back to the corporate employment. Mm -hmm. And there I shared a few friends. Um, my, stop, my phone actually stopped ringing. Mm -hmm. 
as, as much. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. Ask anyone who has started to do that and it's a failure. Yes. You, you always think people are checking on your phone and you're thinking, did I have a missed call? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Boom, you find your phone is very silent, no missed calls, no messages. Yes. Mm-hmm. I used to have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, phone calls, I think, previously, in, in that previous life. Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized when I started business, I, I, the phone calls just dwindled. And uh, yeah, at some point I learned, I think it was the office that at that point I had that uh, made that happen. So that I don't take it personal. Mm. I didn't take it uh, personal. Uh, and, and, and I think that helped. So the expectation, I think, was uh, that I would move back to corporate and people would ask me, is this your main job? Is this what you want to do? Or is it a side hustle? And I'm like, no, I'm focused on this. And you get many opportunities also along the way because people come with this and you're thinking. And the first six months, actually, of uh, of business, I, 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 I tell you, are normally not easy. Yeah. You're actually thinking, am I... Yes, and you'd go back to the CV and think, uh, do I need to revamp it up? Mm-hmm. Or, uh, but uh, I think past the six months, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those well, temptations uh, die. So there were people who would expect that, yes, I would move back. They were naysayers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I moved forward mm-hmm. and uh, focused on the, on the bigger picture. Wow. So... Five years down the line, mm-hmm. how would you put together that experience, setting mm-hmm. up the business? I know at some point, now this is I'm preempting, I know at some point you had to leave the country again mm-hmm. when you had already started the business and it was still very young. Mm-hmm. And you being away from the country again and the business is still very young that needs you. Can you re- recap, give us a summary of how that journey was and what was the, were the challenges that you faced as a woman and an entrepreneur who had other responsibilities as a wife and a mother that affected you in your entrepreneurship? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the first uh, five years, a lot happened. We developed, we got more products. I started developing a team as well. Uh, we registered a brand. It's called Sante, our main brand, which yeah. means uh, health in in in, in French. Yes. And um, also now more di- disruption, of course, happened. I became a mother. I was away from the business for quite uh, a long time, actually a year. And also that tested the systems in my business uh, a lot. I almost uh, came to <laughs> a, a standstill, and that's where you know uh, that you need to build. I learned to build you now structures and systems to support the business, and especially uh, in my absence uh, as well. So quite some lessons there uh, within those uh, five years. Uh, but like I said, it's you get used to disruption. I think when you're in business, you have to be ready for disruption uh, because that happens every day. Like now, we used to say our interest is in traveling, going to the park and the beach. Mm-hmm. Now people are going to the space. Oh yes. <laughs> now it's space. So we have to innovate ourselves as into into new environments, into new markets to just. Uh, Keep the customer happy. Doing business in Kenya, number one, as a woman. Number two, the systems that we have in Kenya, and uh, when I talk of systems, mainly, especially when I look at what you do or what your company does, you'd be going to hospitals and looking for tenders to get, you know, to be a supplier of you know, different products. And we have this culture in Kenya. Kickbacks. Scratch my back, scratch yours. And here you are, a Christian woman, a woman who is trying to establish a business with a kingdom principle. How do you 
deal with that or how do you deal with that as you are building up structures for your business? Um, I think what helped us from early on, we just decided that um, our way will be the it's straight and narrow, if I may say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which is not popular but to tell you in Kenya, and people keep asking, how does that actually even happen? Uh, and you get, you get used to that way of, of, of operating. And uh, we've had many opportunities uh, that have come and where we've had to say, no, this is not meant for us because it means if we'd have to compromise our principle A, B, and C to maybe do a, a, a kickback, then it's not our business. And many other businesses come still that are, we are able to that are able to operate within our values. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's doable. It's uh, we have done it for ten years. We are looking to do it for the next hundred. What would you tell a woman? Who wants to do business or who wants to step out and do something um, in a great way but is limited of maybe do I have the resources enough to get me out there? Do I even have the muscle to get out there to face all these other key players in the industry? As a woman who you have already stepped into that space, what, what would you say to that Woman who is seated there at the level of dreaming. They are dreaming big, their dreams are really big, but they are stuck there. What would you tell that woman? Um, simply to start where they are with what they have. Uh, it's, it's good to have uh, the, the, the great picture in, in, in mind on the onset. But it's also very important to start where you are with what you have because uh, it, is, it is doable. Mm -hmm. I, would, uh, I, would, I would encourage them. We also have a program actually that uh, supports uh, women who also are interested in getting into the business mm -hmm. the, at ideation, mm -hmm. just to encourage them to help them set up and, uh, and, 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 and move on. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I would say to her to just start because I think that's the hardest. That's the hardest step to just begin. Mm -hmm. yes. Do you have any fears? Yes, I have. Uh, I don't know if I call them fears or reservations. Please tell us. Categorize <laughs> fears, reservations. <laughs> just give it to us. Uh, I think one of the greatest ones is that uh, I'd, I'd be here in person and not create an impact. That would be mm. the biggest one that, uh, that, that, that I have. Uh, that I was here, I didn't make any impact and I have gone and there's nothing left of what I, I was able to achieve. I also sometimes fear that uh, whoever I'm onboarding my staff, will I be able to take care of them, the staff, will they grow with us, will they make an impact in their lives, will they be able to make an impact in other people's lives. Uh, every year when we are taking maybe a new student to help, I worry will I be able to complete this because you don't take uh, for one year, it's, uh, if it's high school it's four years, uh, but so far God has been faithful, we have not uh, we have not let any of them go midway. Yeah, so sometimes you have that, uh, but uh, God keeps confirming and, and, and reconfirming. Every day, every day is a day of faith because you wake up. Today I woke up, uh, uh, we opened our doors in, in our offices. We didn't know how many clients would actually send us their LPOs or come in through the door. And by the end of the day, you have reached a target or you're almost there. So it's always a walk of faith. Sure. It's always a walk of faith that uh, you you trust that, uh, that that the goals that you have set, you're going to achieve them and you work towards that. Actually, when you say that, it, it just strikes a thought in my mind and I'm thinking it's not about what 
you as a person are able to achieve daily to accomplish that vision and that dream that you have. But it's, it is actually surrendering and relinquishing all your visions, your dreams, your aspiration to the one who has your future. Mm -hmm. That means you, you step out in faith that he got you. Exactly. So you, you, you just make one move and allow the rest to him. He's putting it all together mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. And in his time, he makes everything good. So for us, our mandate mm -hmm. it is to step, make that step, mm -hmm. move. When, when you have clarity of this is what I am shaped to be, this is what I am called to do, step out and do and allow him the one who has your future, the one who has your destiny, the one who knows your tomorrow, to shape. As you keep on moving, he shapes it. As you keep on moving, he shapes it. But sometimes we really want to, to hold on to it because we think, I am the one in control. We are not. So I, I love the fact. And the point where you say it's about making uh, impact. I remember a personal experience I had in uh, 20, in 2017, mm -hmm. I got really sick, really sick. I was in and out of hospital every month, every month, every month. And at this one point, I, I was in hospital, I was hospitalized, but I felt the need to go to the washroom and I was very weak. So it was in the middle of the night and the nurses had done their rounds in our cubes. And therefore, I step out of the bed to take myself to the washroom, but I collapse. So now when they, when they tell me, what they tell me afterwards is, when they found me, when the nurse came back, they found me on the floor, and I had done my business there. So they, that was already a shock, like, this person is dead. So when they checked my pass, it was really weak. So it was now rushing and... It took me for all these tests. My heart, they said my heart had a mama and it was really now an emergency, a life or death situation. And I remember when I came to, now was the following day, that is when I came to, there were still other tests that they were running. So I was being wheeled in this bed into this room that had so many lies. Like I was, you see the way they give stories about I went to heaven mm -hmm. and I saw. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought, oh, this is it. <laughs> so this is how heaven looks like. So when I was right there, I, in my spirit, there was this prayer that, Lord, I've had so many opportunities, so many opportunities in ourselves to make, we need to believe in impact ourselves. in people's lives. Yes. But I have always shied away because I've always felt really, I am not uh, enough. A great wow, my, how do I even go about it? it? Have you but I told God, uh, if not even for my own child uh, that I just so had, so that I want to see grow up, and the joy of a mother, because that is what a lot of people say, Lord, preserve my life for my children. If not for that, give me another chance so that I can make an this amazing place. Because I looked at my life, I think that was another chance for doing an original thing. <laughs> <laughs> of doing your own <laughs> so what do they say about <laughs> Helen? What is God? So Helen loves cooking for people. <laughs> Helen loves to have you know good time. But real life dream impact. He is able to have their parts. And actually, that is what we are called to do. Make that step for the start in our own simple way. He's got your back. So. And then even as we sit we in that chair, don't, don't, see, don't yeah. close even as we in, have don't keep on moving and ask yourself, our main who am I, agenda how has been to be just to stay a new woman and see that in your do. own space you I can hope make you have been inspired. You don't need that to stay, look yourself, that have, have pity parties, and ask yourself, what can I do next My husband will next time. I this. lost my job, I love you. Eh? and this and that, and you are there mopping, and thinking you cannot become better. 
Imagine you selling the most amazing chapatis on that first street. Imagine you serving people in whatever capacity that you may think it is very meaningful, but you change one life or you put a smile in one life. That is the impact. That is the call that we have been called to. It doesn't have to be in the high office. Mm. It doesn't have to be in this big corporate names that we are always thinking that Sasa ume pata your degree, now I need to get this. No, it can be in that estate, in that school, in that mamamboga line hapo. There is a mamamboga in our estate that if you don't buy mamam, if you don't buy mbogas from that woman, you feel like is on boga, is it a as it a quarter? Because the way and I could story. The way Anaku, the way she relates with people, even if you had such an uh, awful day at work, it just changes everything. So it is about us arising in our own space and just making that impact. And so looking down the line, Joki, you've been mentioning 10 years. It's been 10 years. And you're actually celebrating your 10 year anniversary in operation. <laughs> Yes. It's our anniversary today. Oh! Wow! <laughs> I'll make, this is so timely. Amazing. Thank you. So, sum up mm-hmm. the 10 years. Mm-hmm. What lessons? What growth? What the tears you have cried? Just, just bring the picture <laughs> of the 10 years. Wow, it's a, it's a lot uh, to just crumble in... Uh, in one bit, but uh, let me try. Uh, sorry, I was laughing about you going to heaven <laughs> and, 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 and coming back, uh, but that's quite also uh, a story. We are all here for we are all here for purpose, and to that woman that we are asking to just start, um, we also need to say that um, what we are starting, we also need to look at the value that we are creating. Yeah. Like the Mamamboga creates value addition when she's smiling yeah, at you yeah. and giving you beautiful stories while yeah. she's doing that. Because it's possible, whenever you have value, you can't go wrong. Whenever you're, you're setting out to, to make an impact, mm. a positive impact in somebody's life, how can you go wrong? So, and that's what, uh, what we did initially. So the 10 years I can say have been wrapped up in some Sweat, blood, and tears. <laughs> it cannot be any other way. <laughs> yes, so we've had uh, quite some ups uh, where we'd get the awards and recognition for, you know, just uh, setting up a business uh, that, that, that works with uh, integrity and is there to serve customers and give affordable and quality medical devices. Uh, but we've also had some downs in the in the business, like uh, that year in, uh, I was telling you about in 2016, where everything almost crashed down and we had to start from the beginning. And uh, you also have dark moments. Sometimes uh, you have some pilferage in the company. Mm. Those are some of the worst. Uh, but uh, all in all, the lessons are what makes this 10-year-old journey very beautiful. When I see my staff moving from, you know, from this level to the next level, mm. it's quite fulfilling. If there's nothing else that, uh, that that business gives you, it's just that fulfillment that you have impacted one life. Yes. Uh, so those are normally the, the, the apps uh, that here we made some impact. There are people who will come and say, oh, you've stuck to your guns, you decided to do your business, fellow colleagues in the industry in this manner, and mm. wow, it's, it seems to be working. Mm. So in a way you plant those seeds of, it actually can work. Mm. That's impact. Yes. Uh, so we've had those moments, both beautiful ones and not so beautiful ones. 
Uh, but the highlights are those lessons that you can actually co-create because that's what God gives us. We, and, and as entrepreneurs, we are co-creators. Mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, well, we can create uh, things that make impact and mm -hmm. give value to people's lives, mm -hmm. and that's why we also headed uh, uh, in a big way into production mm -hmm. to also ensure that some of these products that are, uh, we are importing from different countries can also be produced locally because we can we we we, we can do that. Oh yeah. Uh, so we are co-creators. And, uh, and, and, and that gives me juice, that gives me zeal to, to keep going, that uh, uh, we can, we can co-create better things, we can innovate, we can change lives, we can make it better, we can, uh, you know, uh, bring the kingdom here. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so those are some of the highs and lows uh, that, that we have experienced in business. So integrity has been big for us, mm -hmm. impact has been big for us, and uh, also consistency. Wow. There's something I want us to sum up with before we do. Mm -hmm. 2020, mm -hmm. COVID. <laughs> I celebrate you, and I celebrate with you. I feel like I'm almost part of that <laughs> team. <laughs> 2020, 2021, COVID. <laughs> brought you into another level. It made your company hit the million dollar mark. Wow, how did that feel? Um, it was exhilarating uh, and vindicating in a way that... Oh, uh, <laughs> after the tears, after the walking rights. Yes, uh, but also what happened uh, during that period it, it, it's what I'm talking about, the three pillars that we have, and one of them is consistency. COVID found us doing the things that we had been doing for those last, like, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And so it was uh, an opportunity for us to even serve better with what we have mm -hmm. and, and, and fill that gap. Uh, so we were ready and, 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 and glad to serve. Mm -hmm. And so that worked uh, better also for our profit margins. We are grateful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, knowing what you know today or now, the wisdom that you have acquired so far, looking at your younger version, mm -hmm. what would you tell that younger Joki mm -hmm. when she was starting or when she was had all these worries and all these plans and she was all over. What would you tell that Joki? Or what would you tell any girl, any lady out there? What are the nuggets that you can leave with us to inspire us to just us mm -hmm. and just function? Okay. <laughs> um... So what I can say, I think it's a point that you had uh, raised earlier of we are becoming wise. We are not that yet there. We don't have all the wisdom. And uh, in my younger self, uh, I think I would appreciate if I knew that, that it's a, a moving into, a becoming, it's a journey, that uh, it's, it's, it's not an end. It's not an end, that uh, you keep growing, Every day, today we are growing. I'm learning from you. You're learning from me. And 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 so, the thing is just to believe in God, mm -hmm. and believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. God has created all of us as co-creators. Wow. We can do it. Wow. We can all do it. So believe in God. Believe in yourself. Sometimes as women, we don't do enough of believing in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We need to believe in ourselves more. And that is just amazing, amazing. It's been really uh, a great experience having you here. And I feel like we need to have you uh, into more episodes. <laughs> uh, just, just there's so much to learn from you. And I thank you for, for gracing our show. And I look forward to even other opportunities when we can come and have speak to 
these amazing ladies who are watching us and maybe at some point even have a, a, a conference for ladies and just mm -hmm. talk to the ladies because there is so much that we can learn from each other. Each one of us, God has given us the gift and, and something special inside of you that you can step into and function in and just trust that he, the one who put the dream in you, he is able to walk with you step by step. As long as you make the move, make that step of faith and start moving. He's got your back. And therefore, don't sit in that chair. Don't, don't close yourself in. Don't keep on moving and asking yourself, who am I? How can I even do it? Just step out and see God do the rest. And therefore, I hope that you have been inspired, that you have been encouraged, that your faith has been built up, that your mind has been renewed and refreshed for your next level. So see you next time. God bless you. I love you.